So we left it off where our list API view required a serializer class. Now, what serializers are going to do is it's going to allow our project to work with the data in a very specific way. And also, it's going to turn our data into JSON, but it's also going to use validation, much like a form works. In fact, they are built off of forms. So if we go into the API guide and go into serializers, you'll see right there, serializers and the REST framework work very similar to Django's form and model form classes. So if you know form and model form and how those work, serializers is going to make a lot more sense um, because it's essentially the same, right? We've got this common serializers. We can see co email content created, all this stuff. Um, so there are things that we can do, but what it's coming at the end of the day, it's going to come back as certain kind of data. Um, so in this one, we're going to actually create a model serializer and we're going to do it so we can see that list view actually work. Um, then what we'll do is actually play around with these serializers in the shell so you can see how the serial uh, how it actually works in real time with the shell um, and how you can actually play around with various things of it. Um, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and create a new Python module inside of the API or a new Python file. And we're going to call it serializers.py. And in here, we're just going to do from rest underscore framework import serializers. And again, this stuff, you can go to the documentation at the very top. Most of the time, that's when you'll see where the imports are. This is not something that you should memorize at first. It, you should just get comfortable with understanding that, hey, I need to make a serializer, so let me look on how I actually impo import it. And it's not that big of a deal. Um, okay, so now we want to use a specific model that we're going to be serializing, much like in our model forms. So if we look at form, we have our post model form. It's going to look very similar to this, except it's not going to be a form. It's going to be a serializer. So inside of the serializers, we're going to go from posts.models import post. And we'll do class post serializer. And it's going to be serializers.model serializer. And just like I said in the last one, this is OK method, but I actually want to leave it as explicit. So dot serializers import model serializer. I think this is a better method for using um, various things. In this case, using the serializer, we're just going to import just the model serializer. Um, this is a style thing. It's not necessarily something you have to do, but if you do it this way, definitely remain consistent throughout. So in here, just like model form, we do class meta and we say model equals to post and then fields are the fields that we want to serialize. So in this case, we're going to say title and slug and then finally content. And that is going directly off of the model itself. So title, slug, content. Notice we didn't do anything with image um, or draft and all that stuff. There's a lot of things that we were probably going to leave out um, just because it's not necessary. It's a little redundant information and it's um, also probably not needed. Okay, so now that we've got this post serializer, let's go back into our view and let's actually import this. So I'll do from dot serializers import post serializer. Uh, do note that it is a relative import inside of the Python, uh, the post module. Again, this could be posts.api.serializers but we're just doing dot serializer because it's a relative import. Okay, so now what we want is the serializer class and we're gonna say post serializer. We're gonna save it and we're gonna jump into our view, refresh, and it says template does not exist. REST framework api.html. Well, that's pretty strange. It probably should be there, um, but I think I know why. We kind of skipped something. And that is if we go back into home through the installation process, I believe we installed everything, but I don't actually remember putting rest framework in the installed apps. So let's go ahead and copy that and go into our settings into installed apps. And we're going to put the rest framework in here. And now refresh in here and we see it is now working. We actually don't have any posts. So let's create some, I'm going to go into post, um, slash create. This is something we created. Oops, actually, it's just creates now. So change the URLs slightly. 
and we aren't logged in. So it's giving us a 404. Let's just log into the admin and now go back into create. And now let's create a new post. So new post here, some content. Um, I'm gonna say it's published first, there we go. We're gonna make another one and say another item here, some content too, so on, create that post. Now let's go back into the API, posts, and now we see some API data. Um, so this is the serialized data. Now if we go back into our actual serializer, let's close out the settings and forms, we don't need that. But back into the serializers.py, if we did publish at, I believe we said publish at is the name of it. So let's go into models and no, we just call it publish. We can add that in there, refresh, and we see a date, right? Um, and we can also get the ID. So we can get the ID of the actual post and we refresh in there and that's giving us the ID. So this is the ID in the database, right? So it's a, a unique ID that Django creates for us. Um, so notice a few things here. We have HTTP 200, that means it's a successful result. But we can also use question mark format equals to JSON. And this gives us actually JSON data. So this is raw JSON data. And the only reason that we see it like this is it's called the browsable API. And we can actually change the default functionality here, which is something we will show you how to do. Uh, but for now, we have serialized data. So what you might guess is it just took what was originally in the database and turned it into JSON data. And this is now ready to be used somewhere else. So basically, if all you wanted was your blog to have a API for the posts themselves, the post list API is pretty much all you might need. You wouldn't necessarily need to go any further um, because you can also change um, how your actual like how the ability to actually see it you can change those things as needed as well that is the permission classes or the authentication classes um, which is something we'll get into very soon as well so if you have any questions on this one let us know in the comments below otherwise let's keep going